I have been very lucky to get educated in this institution, Government College University, Lahore, where Lama Dr. Muhammad Iqbal was a student. And I'm extremely privileged to lead this institution now. Another experience that I always cherish in my life is to be a student at Oxford University. And, and many of you who aspire to go to Oxford would like to get a sense why Oxford, why institutions like Oxford, like Cambridge, Harvard, what is it in them that helps their students to stand out, not just lead their nations, but lead the world, become global leaders? And even more important question for you would be, why can't we have such institutions in Pakistan? What is it that we need to do to actually make institutions like Government College University an Oxford-like student? And, and this question never goes out of my mind while doing out the mundane tasks every day. And in my thinking and in my discussion and my experience of two years of leading this institution and working across the world, I have been a professor at London School of Economics, I have been a professor at Seoul National University, South Korea, and all that experience behind me and studying in the best institutions of the world as well. And, and this question keep coming back, what is it that we need to do to make institutions great like uh, University of Oxford? And I think three things I have been able to put them together, put all those thoughts into three aspects. And if we are able to bring about that change, bring about that reform in which we could actually bring those three changes in our system, then we will be able to, I have no doubt in saying that, we will be able to have institutions like Oxford in, in Pakistan. The first, and that is the most important aspect, we need to have a system, an assessment system, a teaching system, and a class attitude, class behavior of students and teachers in which we could have, we could tap the diverse talents of our teachers. In Pakistan, what we do, we set you, we put you in a single subject. And then in that subject, single subject, we define a curriculum. And we say that you are a successful student only if you fulfill that single well-defined path of talent. There is no doubt there is lots of talent required in memorizing uh, some information. But that's all we seem to do in our system that we give credit to those who can actually memorize uh, their subject. We need to come out of it. And if we need to aim and aspire to have institutions like Oxford, then we need to come up with an assessment system, a class system, a classroom lecture system in which we could look into diverse talents that students have amongst themselves. So that's the first aspect. The second aspect is to have a, an interaction between students and teachers which could actually create curiosity about the subject. And again, going back to the first point, where we are looking for diversity in your talent, the curiosity should not be just about that very aspect which is taught on that day, or taught in that silo subject that we have boxed you in. But the curiosity should be about wider aspects of the knowledge. Curiosity should be about interdisciplinary aspects and not about single disciplines. 
Unfortunately, in our pursuit of respect for teachers, we have elevated them so much that students are not at all encouraged to ask questions. And questions lead to curiosity. We need to break that, uh, that ice-cold behavior that we have in the classrooms. A dictator dictating the pupils what they need to learn, and if they learn that, they are good students. We need to break that. We need to bring about interaction between students and teachers in a manner that curiosity could be built in that classroom. In Oxford, very often, despite the fact that we had high respect for our teachers, we were calling them with first names. And it, uh, very often, we were having coffee or lunch over a stale sandwich with them. And that was breaking that ice that we should not refrain from asking any question in the classroom that uh, comes to my, our mind. Another way we can actually break that ice, and that's what, since I have arrived in, in Government College University, I've been trying to do, is through extracurricular activities. And through those extracurricular activities, engaging students with teachers, if they go on hiking and mountaineering uh, trip uh, and, and spend a couple of days together, they are more likely to engage themselves and be interactive with each other in the classroom as well. Similarly, the summit we organized of student societies, the whole purpose was that through this interaction of students and teachers, we ask them to strive for excellence, and excellence can only be achieved through an interaction of a learned master, your teacher, and the pupil. Uh, so that's the second aspect in which we aim to create curiosity in our classrooms. Third is the most important, and especially if you want to become a nation which would lead other nations. If you want to have the aspirations to have institutions like Oxford, and from those institutions, global leaders emerge. Then we need to have innovation. That the knowledge we have learned in our classrooms, knowledge we have learned through not just our own discipline, but from other disciplines through extracurricular activities, we should be able to use that knowledge to innovate, to create new ideas. Uh, only then you will be able to stand out uh, amongst other students and amongst other nations. We are very fortunate to have China as one of our friendly country, and through CPEC, uh, we will be seeing a revolution in the use of science and technology in Pakistan. But do we want only Chinese coming and doing that applications of science and technology in, in our country? And, and we not benefiting from that revolution that is happening in science and technology. That can only happen if our students become so competent that they stand shoulder to shoulder to those Chinese and be able to also uh, dictate their knowledge of science and technology. Only then our country would truly benefit from this partnership with a, a great country like China. So what we want to really do is to make a 360 degree transformation in our system in which we move away from this dictator type teacher to a very obedient, subservient student. We want interactions between students and, and teachers. We want to move away from this system of examinations in which only one type of ability of memorizing your, your lessons is tested. In fact, we want to get to a new system of examinations in which we could tap into diverse talents that our students have. And then put the onus on you, students, that you take that good education from higher education institutions and, and be innovative in your work. Be creative, be, be the creators of the new ideas 
which could bring about positive change in the society, which could make you the most competitive in the competition, in the global competition of science and technology. And I have no doubt, uh, talented students that I have been meeting uh, in Government College University and other institutions that we have the highest potential. We as educators, as the administrators, as the leaders of the higher education have the responsibility to identify how we can change the system of examinations, how we can bring about improvement in the education experiences in the classroom, out of the classroom, in the campuses, and, and then put the onus back on the students to use that uh, knowledge to uh, creativity and innovation. I hope I have made sense and I hope this talk is useful. If we are really committed to this task, I have no doubt that we can see that change during my lifetime. I'm not talking about some reforms that would take centuries to uh, change Government College University into an Oxford-style institution. I'm talking about uh, within my lifetime of 10, 15 years of continuous struggle with the positive intentions to bring about those changes. And I'm absolutely certain if uh, not uh, this generation, just certainly the next generation will have institutes like Oxford in Pakistan. Thank you so much. Thank you.